Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Indigo Communications. I'm Peter Martin, Tammy McManus and Charlie Adam here with us on this uh, Friday ahead of Wednesday's game for Scotland against Ukraine. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about what's happening in the Ukrainian camp. Uh, we'll uh, discuss all the comings and goings at your favourite club. There could be some players that you want to come in, but there's certainly players looking to past years new. We'll discuss that as well as the Champions League final on Saturday evening between Liverpool and Real Madrid. Uh, our reporter Kerry Pollock will look ahead to that. Um, but Tam, it's one of those emotional days. We've had a right good old season uh, with Charlie. It's been it's been an emotional ride. Just a pity we couldn't go to Cuba live to speak to Ruffy. Absolutely, so <laughs> absolutely sozzled with a Cuban cocktail by his side, saying goodbye to Charlie. <laughs> No, I think Ruffy's having a good time in his life over in Cuba, hasn't he? He's sent all the photos in, but no, listen, Charlie, he's yet to decide what he's going to do, whether he's going to play on or, or go into coaching or whatever, so um, this could be the last supper, so to speak. Yeah. He's even wore his shorts today. Yeah, absolutely. There will be complaints about that. There will be complaints. Because, uh, Worst Ruth, legs and Ruffy. I think it was Ruth that wasn't happy with Ruffy's legs. Oh. Uh, she thought it was very much like a carrier pigeon in agony. Um, <laughs> but from your own point of view, Charlie, um, let's cut to the chase. Never mind PLZ. What the hell are you doing? Where are you going? Have you had an offer? I've had a couple of offers, Peter. Yeah. Um, a, a couple, one abroad. and But um, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to have a holiday next week with a family. And, and, you know, it's been, I've been away from them since, since January, really. And they've been down south. So I'll go back, have a holiday and, um, and, and take stock, really, what, what's going to happen and what I want to do. But, um, no, it's been a great, great two years, and um, I've loved every minute of coming on this show as well. Yeah, well, we've been delighted uh, to have you. Um, hi to Kenny, um, to Derek Lee. Uh, Derek's watching the show in Tokyo at the moment. Hi to Thomas, Marlon, and Nikki as well. Just on that point, you, you mentioned there about um, you know disappointed to leave Dundee, disappointed because of the way it all ended. I mean, I thought you were a a, a nap to to be there in the championship for one more year. Yeah, I thought so as well. Um, I was told that you know I would be getting a contract for next season, but things change, and um, you know the club obviously want to go in a different direction. But that's football. Um, we move on, and um, they're trying to appoint a new manager. It seems to to be difficult at the moment. Um, you know, Jack obviously was in the running, and obviously not now, and it looks like it might be Sean. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go and who they go for. Yeah, uh, I mean the speculation um, about Sean Maloney is taking a little twist from being the number one red hot after Jack pulling out. Uh, suddenly there's a spanner in the works with maybe Vincent Company looking at him. But I don't know. I mean, money certainly won't be an issue in Sean Maloney's life. He'll be looking and thinking to himself, surely it's time to be a manager with at least a director of football who would protect him and give him a chance to, to blossom. Yeah, I think he's very close to Gordon Stratton and I think that's probably one of the main reasons that, that he's been in, you know, linked with the job heavily. Um, it's up to him whether he wants to go and you know, be a part of Burnley's set-up with Vincent Company. Maybe he's hanging on to, maybe he's appointed or you know, whatever's happening. But you know, I think it would be a bit of a risk for Dundee. You know, Sean never got a lot of time at Ibs, but you know, the way he wants to play, is that going to, is that going to work in the championship? No disrespect with the, maybe the quality of players that they've got. It's all right having a philosophy, but have you got the players to play like that? And uh, I'm not so sure Dundee have, and that's a league that's very difficult to get out of. Yeah, um, Greg says Maloney's going to Burnley. Um, so Greg's made his decision on this. Listen, uh, you know, talks can break down at any moment. Uh, sorry to George, who says you've got the wrong date of your show um, on the feed. And I'm, it's just a technical glitch here and there um, on this one. We didn't want to give everybody... Um, oh, here's Greg as well. Peter, straight question. You being a massive Maloney fan, what did he possess that Stephen Glass didn't? Um, well, you know, at the end of the day, young managers who come to try and make... Uh, an impression in the game, you give them the benefit of the doubt until they fall flat in their face. Um, I think Aberdeen gave Stephen Glass quite a fair bit of backing uh, and and gave him a bit of time. Didn't work out there. Sean Maloney's a slightly different scenario here. There was, I, I think there were other factors going on in the background that worked against him. Yeah, absolutely. I think Stephen's one is that you know he come in and tried to change and you know results one to the expectation of what Aberdeen expect. Hibs are the same. But Sean had a few quid to spend as well. You know, bringing in, uh, was it Mikkelsen, Mikkelsen mm -hmm. the striker for 300 grand. It's a big investment for Hibs. And, and it goes down to results as well. The results weren't good enough for a club like Hibs. 
Yeah. So, you know, as a manager, you take you carry the can for that. And if the results are not good enough, you're not going to be in a job. How but, difficult is it for you, though? Because you're going to have to make that decision. And all these permutations now for young uh, managers who are just, you know, stop playing or stop playing for a couple of years, you suddenly want to, obviously with all your coaching badges, you want to make an impression. But suddenly if you go into an environment where you're promised this, but suddenly all of a sudden the signings by committee, Mm -hmm. uh, and then you inherit a squad where you really want to try and change it around and you don't, your career could be over in three months. Well, that's the decision you have to make as a person. You have to be, you know, have to be up and honest with the owners to say that you know, you've changed the goalposts. If they've changed the goalposts, then obviously the relationship can't work. You know, it's a trust thing. It's a, you know, that's what they, when you go into the football club, you, you set your parameters, what you want and what they want. And if, and if he, they start changing it and if you start changing, then there's obviously going to be a, you know, a bit of a, a disagreement. And, you know, when you've got, like you say, at Hibs, I think Sean's situation was that, you know, the, the owner's son was involved and things like that. It's very difficult when, when things like that get involved. And unfortunately for Sean, he's, he's relatively new into management, um, but he's getting a good job if he goes and gets that. But, you know, like Tam says, I'm not too sure. I think he needs a good six, seven signings um, if he wants to go and try and play in the right manner. Yeah. Was there ever a sniff that you could have taken on the, the no, job? No, no. It was never discussed. Um, the only discussion that I was was that um, I was kept I was going to get kept on and um, that changed in the last day of the season well the day after the last day of the season when I got a phone call Has that left a, a bitter taste in your mouth? I'm not bitter disappointed um, because at the end of the day you know when you've got somebody's word you know you, you, you hang on to that and you're hoping that you can come and make a difference which I felt that in a championship I could still make a difference at my age but that changed um, new manager coming in wants new ideas and um, you know, we move on from that and I wish them all the best Are you hanging up the boots? No, um, at the moment, no. I'm looking to see what, what options come round um, and, you know, I'll wait my time and if the, the right option comes round, then I'll, I'll play on. But if not, then I will hang them up. I have no fear of, of hanging the boots up. Um, I just look forward to the next, you know, the future. But I've said to you before earlier today that, you know, this is this is the long term. If I do go into coaching, it's not the short term. So to go and jump into a management job straight away and be at the forefront, it's going to be very difficult, so I need to go and learn my trade, need to go and coach, get on the grass for a you know, few years and then stick your neck on the line to see if you, you're really you're good enough out of what you want and believe in what you, your philosophy is. I think that's a sensible approach, Tam. Yeah, as a listener, it's, it's difficult to, to go into straight into management if you've not got you know, a, lot of, a lot of coaching experience. You know, and, and as Charlie said, hours on the grass. You've got to go somewhere and make your mistakes. You, know, you, you can't go into a... Apart from probably Scott Brown, you know, he's going. He's going to be really tested. You know, he's not got a lot of coaching experience or, or hours in the grass. He's going straight into a Fleetwood job, so that's a risk for him. Uh, and as I said, young managers, you know, if you if you fail in your first job, you'd be very very lucky to get another one. You know, there's a long line of managers who are out of the game, experienced managers who the, would look towards. The good thing about Bruni is that he's getting a good owner and a good CEO that that they understand what he's bringing. You know, he's bringing the personality of Scott Brown. Obviously, I know the owner well, and, and, and they're very surprised that he's a totally different person from what he is on the pitch and, mm. and to the person he is strong in his ideas and what he <laughs> wants and what, what that club needs going forward. Um, and, you know, he'll get time because the owner likes that. He likes to give somebody an opportunity, and Scott will get that. Um, so it's good to see him get the opportunity, and hopefully, he can do well there. Yeah, from your own point of view, if you've got to go and learn your trade, you know, whether it's teaching youngsters and trying to work your way up in an academy, I presume that's very much in the cards. I mean, I, you know, I, I think there was, there was a, a little sniff last, maybe last season, of course, with West Ham as well. I mean, is that the type of thing that interests you? You're quite happy to cut your teeth in an academy somewhere? Yeah, no, I'm happy to go and learn, um, you know, an under-18 level and, you know, I have a platform to, to make mistakes, like Tam said. Um, you need to make the mistakes, see what, I, I, listen, I have a plan on what I want to do and what my team should look like and my philosophy is in terms of, you know, the, the way I want my, my team to go. But unless you actually get out in the grass and try it, you don't know if it's going to work. So you need to make little tweaks. So, no, I'm, I'm looking to see what comes round. And if something comes round the next, you know, while, then I'll, I'll look at it and hopefully I can, can be out there um, you know, very, very soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, Tam, Gary's just said, has Tam never fancied moving into coaching? Um, which, to be fair, you're on the uh, SFA coaching, uh, you know, panel. Mm -hmm. uh, you coach kids at Braidhurst. Is that not something that you would fancy as well? Yeah, possibly. Uh, as I said, I've been at Braidhurst for 
I think four years now. You know, I'm in there two or three times a week. So you know, it's it's more individual coaching that I'm doing. It's no really team coaching. You know, in terms of a large number of, of, of players. So I think if I, if I was going to go into coaching, it would be as a specialist coach or an individual coach, whether that be forwards, wingers, strikers. You know, I thought that would be something that would interest me rather than going into actual management. I, I don't think. You know, I'd want to be a number one anyway. Yeah. Uh, that's just my personal opinion at the minute. But if I went in and you know assisted somebody or whatever, then possibly. But it's just about it's just about getting you the right opportunity. How would you handle Tam McManus? Oh, out the door straight away. <laughs> oh, get out! <laughs> that was first training session. Get out! I'm, I'm no surprised I had so many managers because I was I was a horrible horrible player. Yeah. Hey, deal with it. Aye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In what way? Oh, I was just huffy, you know. I, I, I was selfish, you know. I wasn't really a team player, and I, I needed, I needed, I needed an arm around the shoulder. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't uh, react well to a put out the backside. I was mere, a, you're, you're good and you're, you're doing this. Player, aye. Aye. Yeah. Is and right? the certain managers who done that, Stephen Kenny, get the best sign of choice, and he, he just knew how I, how I worked. You know, he would, he would, you know, boost your ego and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the way. I, the players are like that. Charlie will tell you. There's players who are like that. You want to feel loved to be a manager, and there's players who you need to get right in about them, you know, to get them playing. So it's it's a, it's a balancing act. You get into coaching. There's so many different personalities that you've got to deal with. Yeah, I wish I'd. Yeah, I wish you'd said that to me at the start when we hired them, Charlie. We could <laughs> we could have got more out of them because all we've done is leathered them. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, he brought that on himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could have I could have put an arm around him and said, "Your opinion really matters." Uh, Honestly, you're, you're an important really, part of the team. Yeah, exactly. Um, whereas I think Ruffy and I were saying. We've signed another badge kisser. He'll be he'll be out of here and onto uh, sleepy radio before you know it. Um, but nevertheless, he's stuck with us because he's loyal. And you never know, Tam. Friendships are a strange thing because although it's a short window of friendship with Charlie, you never know. He might need a specialist at a club, and you could be the man he yeah, calls. That's it. I think that's that, that's the way football's moving. You know, it's, it's at the top level. You know, you've got, you've got throwing coaches, you've got striker coaches, set piece coaches, and I have to admit, I'd be a wee bit embarrassed if they said, "And now, here's the throwing coach." <laughs> I mean, come on! I mean, honestly, well, I feel I'm going to talk right for them. Know, for God's sake, man, Charlie, kept man, the throwing coach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, to be fair, by the way, it's a good kept man. I'd be dying to be a kept man. Aye. It's a good career, isn't it? Aye, aye, absolutely. Yeah. Man City. Yeah, I'm just about to say, <laughs> you, you know, Man City. I'll take the first eleven strips for myself. On you go. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, I'm not having. Uh, uh, and Stuart Ramsey, who listens to the show on a regular basis and watches it, says, Afternoon, guys. Uh, good to hear Charlie isn't hanging up the boots. Good luck to him. And there's a lot of people on here who um, are wishing Charlie all the very best. Uh, and I think that's, listen, genuinely on our programme. People uh, do like a laugh, do like absolutely battering people from time to time. But more often than not, realise the joys of football. I, I would say this to you, Charlie. I know that we've got a one-to-one -one coming out with you next week, looking back over your career, which I thoroughly enjoyed having a natter with you. But this season, we've laughed heartily at some of the some of the, the, the highlights that you've given us and the lowlights. The dive will stay with us forever. It was fantastic. Yeah, it's um, it's got a few views on YouTube and that. For this. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Oh, he loves it. I know. As soon as it happened, he just texted on the on the chat. That's for sure. But yeah, I'll take this show to the next level. So. <laughs> Really yeah, um, and apart from that, I'll tell you one thing though, when you look back, I mean, although we laughed at that, the pass for St Mirren, which was yeah. just so uncharacteristically <laughs> not you, um, the pass at St Mirren was... Do you know what, I'll tell you a funny story about that game, right? And nobody will know this, apart from this, I'll let it come out now. I actually left my boots, so they were no I forgot my boots that game, I let, so... I never went into Dens to pick them up. I just got straight on the bus and I left my boots. So I ended up wearing Dave Mackay's boots that game. <laughs> and that's why I had the shocker. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. It, I, it, it, it looked like a Dave Mackay pass. It did. Can you believe, <laughs> that? You believe that? For all the time in the game, for yeah. 20 yeah. years, I've never forgot my, I forgot my boots that game. I never wore my own boots. They were somebody else. They were Dave's boots I wore. Wow. And I wore somebody else's shin pads. And I had a shocker. Oh, you did have a, you did have a shocker. Listen. How can you forget your own boots? No, I know. 36 years of age. I know. That's your tools, man. It's yeah, incredible. I, I mean, but listen, you have these slip-ups when you have to you have to remember so many other things, um, like who's going to give you a lift home more often than not. Mm. And Big Ruffy stepped up to the plate. But you know the only thing is, and this is a criticism of you that I'm not going to hold back on, 
I said, it must have been great. I said, you know, you're in the car with Charlie and you, you know, you're driving him, you get a wee chance to pick his brains and all the great stories that he said to me. Lucky if I get a sentence out of him. Just glitch this his is phone. Him. This right. is him. He talks to you and you know what he's like? He talks to you in sound bites because he's like, and then he'll come out and he'll go. So busy, and busy. Ruffy was raging, by the way. Ruffy so was busy. raging. I get in the motor and all he wants to talk about is certain situations that we can't kind of discuss on here. <laughs> and by the way, I bought, him, a nice, I bought him some nice wine in that. So. Did you buy him wine? I bought him a nice bottle of wine for picking me up. Exactly, yeah. there you go. He's, Two stories, eh? He's out While he's laying Cuba. Drinking pina coladas and all that. Yeah, I'm so. I wish we were there with him, by the way. What right. A, hey, what a time we could have in Cuba. Oh. It's a place I've never thought about no. going. Yeah, but it's, it, everybody who goes says it's absolutely. Yeah, it's meant to be brilliant. It's meant to be a great, a, a fun, a fun, a fun country. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, apart from anything else, uh, John says hi, Peter, Tam, and Charlie. Great season, great banter. Uh, is there no chance of Charlie signing with Fleetwood and Bruni? Uh, nice and handy for travel. Uh, all the best in what you do, Charlie. Nice one there from John Johnson. Oh, it'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you, can you imagine it? Can you imagine, the, text the, the, imagine the chats? By the text them, Charlie's available. You need another coach. Um, I think there's a, a. My gut feeling is you'll end up um, in down south. You're not coming to see. You're not in Scotland. There's no chance you'll be in Scotland, but I, I think you'll be down south. And, and somewhere near your home would suit you, wouldn't it? No, I'll go. Yeah. I'll go anywhere. I'm, yeah. I'm open to anything really. I'm, I'm you go abroad? Yeah, I'll travel, I'll USA. go. USA? It's no problem. Um, you can't go to the USA. Why? Oh, I can't. I you must let us sit in the, in the next, in the kitchen when you tell your wife we're going to America. I, I, you, and I know you're coming, you're about to say to me, well, I'd head off for the first year. <laughs> 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 no, that was the plan. No, listen, I'm, I'm open to anything, whatever whatever comes round, and um, you've got to look at everything, and um, let's say we'll make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and uh, obviously sooner or later we'll get to the bottom of uh, what's going to happen with Dundee as well because they'll be wanting to know if their manager, who is going to be their manager first and foremost, and then the plans to try and get Dundee out of the Championship, back up into the Premiership, and I certainly hope they can do that because we need Dundee. We need Dundee derbies. We like Edinburgh derbies. We like uh, you know, uh, Celtic against Rangers as well, the old firm derbies. All of these things we love. So, um, And it's good for the Scottish game, which is why I always want to see an extended division. But... Hey, that's for another show. Um, Scotland against Ukraine. Uh, Zinchenko has said that they won't need any motivation against Scotland uh, for the World Cup playoff on Wednesday night. Um, they know what's at stake. Um, they know the difficulties they're facing in their own country. It's just about getting on there, playing a game of football and trying to win it and trying to lift spirits at a very difficult time. And I, I, you know, and I think just winning uh, that game would it would send out a strong message, a groundswell of, you know, good feeling momentarily for the people of Ukraine. Yeah, if, if we weren't Scottish, we'd always, we'd always scream for Ukraine to win this game. Yeah. There's no doubt about that, and the whole world will be, will be watching and wanting Ukraine to win, unless you're Scottish. So, listen, Scotland, they've got to forget that. You know, you've got to, you know, just be ruthless and you've got to just play the game, you know, before it and after it. You know, you can have sympathy, of course. For Ukraine and the, and the situation that they're in, the situation the players' families are in, but you know they've got a job to do. Scotland have not been to a World Cup in a long time. You, you you've got to try and win this game and get down to Wales and and, the, and try and get to the World Cup in Qatar. So yeah, we all want Ukraine to you know to do well, but not in this game. Yeah, um, and that is the case, uh, Charlie. We you know there's two things that we're looking for. Please don't get injured, Andy Robertson, on Saturday night. Uh, and just go about your business. Eight games unbeaten for Steve Clark's uh, international side. So let's build on that. There's been some really good football played under Steve Clark. Yeah, no, I think Steve's he's done a tremendous job. He, he you know, obviously get the hoodoo of no qualifying for a major competition for a long time, going to the Euros. Um, so if we can get to ten unbeaten, um, will obviously mean that we're we're going to Qatar. So yeah, two huge matches. We need to get through Wednesday night first. Um, focus on that. I think we will beat Ukraine. We've got to take advantage of their players not playing for for a, for a while as well. Um, you know, and um, Tierney not not there is is obviously disappointing. But somebody will step in, no problem. And um, hopefully, Andy can come through, and we can we can be looking forward to to Wales. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, it's a huge couple of weeks, uh, Tam, for the nation. You know, off the back of the joy of getting to the European Championships, Qatar 
would just be a dream come true. Steve Clark would just listen, just move on to another stratosphere, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. Um, I think Steve got off to a sticky start uh, with, with Scotland, but he's gradually, you know, got a settled squad, settled team. He's been loyal to certain players, and you know, for it's always a strange time of the year. I think it's November, December, you know, for the World Cup. And I think that'd be great, you know, mm. if, for our country, you know, coming towards Christmas, you know, and you're, you're get that to look forward to as well. So. No, listen, we've got a bit of work to get there, but that would be brilliant for the whole country if we can get to World Cup. Yeah, Matt says, Scotland 2, Ukraine 1. That's enough. David Bradley, Scotland 2, Ukraine 0. Um, so it, it, it's as simple as that. Um, any win will do. It's a, an old Joseph's Technicolor Dreamcoat line. Um, but uh, fingers crossed, on Wednesday, uh, we will have, uh, I think, uh, Steve Clark and many of the Scotland players speaking next week. But if you want to catch the thoughts of Steve Clark, um, um, there's a one-to-one -one up right now on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I caught up with the Scotland manager to get his thoughts on Ukraine and his time in charge. Um, and of course, his uh, ethos on playing football and some of the players that he has at his disposal. Now, it's a really interesting chat with the Scotland manager. Good fun as well, uh, in a relaxed manner. Uh, and it was great to just sit down with him and pick his brains Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, Steve Clark on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. One to one. It's up there now and you can get it on a podcast too. And interestingly enough, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button, hit the bell and you'll get all the notifications of when we put up uh, our one to ones and our dream teams. Charlie's dream teams coming up next week. And I've got a great one to one with him where he looks back over his career. And remember, when you look back over your career, I know you have got a fantastic after dinner act <laughs> where you're very self deprecating, very funny, Tam, on the calamity <laughs> of your life uh, and, uh, you know, the opportunities missed along the way um, but it's not bad when I can sit down for about 45 minutes to an hour and talk about lobbing court Courtois from inside your own half playing for Liverpool in European football it's all magical getting Blackpool into the Premiership no but I wouldn't listen Charlie's had a great career he's played at a very very high level and played with top players so I look forward to to watching that one to one uh, when I'm struggling to get asleep at night yeah why absolutely. don't you, you download it for the flight next week yeah well that's yeah. you've just missed his gag by the way he always he tries to keep a straight face when he's doing a gag so no. so so it, you can see it coming you know uh so never nevertheless you got it in um but uh, you can watch uh, Charlie next week in the one-to-one, -one, looking back over his career, starting off at Rangers and, of course, all the other great clubs that he played for along the way, Blackpool, Liverpool, Stoke City, um, but it all started at Rangers. Um, so, well worthy of your time if you're looking for something to do. Um, and Ronnie Chapman says, Charlie, come and sign for Airdrie, mate. Now, that really would be an eye-opener. Would you move your family up to Airdrie? Is that, I'd be older than the manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> it. It's a Charlie, I'm glad you say it. It's a strange one, isn't it? Uh, it is. Um, so, you know, he obviously is there. He's, he's going to be player manager. And I think the, the his cousin, the assistant manager, is his cousin. He's yeah. going to be player assistant. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know how that the dynamic so, that's so, going to work. So is the kit man? Is he doing tactics? <laughs> I don't know who's going to be standing at the yeah. side, but yeah. He's, his sister's doing the kiosks, and it's, it's a big blow for Erdogan because they've lost their manager, and then they've lost their best player as well. So, you know, it's been interesting to see how it works out. Hope it does for the boy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Charlie, the one thing that we'll miss about you, and this is, you've talked about great goals that you've scored, you've had, you've had some belters along the way. Um, we have a laugh with some of the things that happen on the, the park. You've had a few things happen off the park, but the thing that I think has been the most valuable um, aspect of you joining uh, PLZ Soccer is your ability to assess a player and then put a transfer fee on them. Um, we've thoroughly enjoyed that, uh, Tam. If it's a Celtic player, um, then he's, he, you know, even if he scores mm. a hat trick, he drops in, no. plays in, Char mm. in Charlie's estimation. But if he's a Rangers player, it's suddenly you know, there's those zeros getting added on it, even if he just puts a tackle in, in a game. Much is Bassey worth? Much, much would you sell him for? Come well, on, they're wanting big money from him. No, no, what's you your valuation of a player? He's got to be start at 20 million. What? I think 20 million at least. 20 million. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with their assessment at the moment? What? 20 million. 25. Ah, between 20 and 25 million, I. Yeah. Have you been impressed by him? I think he's brilliant. So I, I think he can go to the top. I watched him in Real Madrid pre-season. Why do you think he can go to the top? Just he's got everything. He's strong, quick, reads the game well, good on the ball, um, defends very well in 1v1 situations. 
I think Rain's a better team when he plays at left back. You know, he gets up, he goes and gets tight to people. I think he's been been magnificent. I think he was brilliant in the UEFA Cup final, the Europa League final as well. And um, you know, the Scottish Cup final he was you know, he's been brilliant all season, so they'll have a big choice to make, you know, if they do, they're all obviously going to be a couple of clubs looking, but they have to I think they'll have to pay big good money for him. Um it'll be a blow for Rangers, but you know, if you look at what they paid for him and, and if they could sell him at a good good market value then they've done a good job on it yeah I mean, his stats are impressive as well tam if you if you see what he's contributed uh, 64 appearances 52 starts six assists europa league final man of the match scottish cup final man of the match okay he's picked up a few bookings but two senior nigeria caps as well and and as we mentioned tam he wasn't a player that was featuring at the start of the season this has been just him suddenly emerging and cementing his place in the team yeah, it has, and it's, I think Leicester City will be asking questions about why they let him go. Um, you know, Brendan Rodgers obviously didn't fancy him, and you know he's came up to Rangers and it's took him a while to get into the team, but now you know, he's motoring towards the end of the season. As Charlie said, he was unbelievable in the Europa League final. You know, great game, Scottish Cup final as well, so he's really, he's producing to, particularly that Europa League game, you know, and that's the eyes of Europe's watching that, you know, in big clubs in Europe, Germany, and uh, they'll look at him and go 20, 25 million English clubs, not a lot of money for them, you know, a lot of upsides, only 22 year old, you know, he's he's, he's going to be a top player, I think. Yeah, and um, one bit of good news, obviously, from the disappointment of the Europa League, um, is the fact that Roma's win in the Commerce League means Rangers, if they actually don't make it to the Champions League in the Europa League, they would be, you know, one of the top seeds, which is, again, uh, you know, if they can build on this squad and not lose too many key players, would be a huge bonus for them. Yeah, no, I think I think being regular in the Europa League, if you can't get in the Champions League, being a seed and getting into the groups would be big, but they still have to put everything into trying to get this Champions League football if they can. Um, I think Rangers, I think they might lose a few players in the summer. That's the, the big thing, you know, yeah. contracts running out, players on the final year. Um, but, you know, Bassi maybe, obviously, for, for money as well. So, no, they'll, they'll always have a plan on where they want to go and what they want to do. So... They need to just come back stronger than they did last season because, let's say, Celtic set the marker for them. Um, thoroughly deserved to be to to win the league, and it's now for Rangers to go and ch to chase them again. Yeah, Tam, no surprise. UEFA have apologised to Rangers and uh, I presume also to Eintracht Frankfurt, saying the demand for food and drink at the ground was much bigger than they uh, usually serve in that stadium. Now, <laughs> again, I just feel as if I feel as if the world is full of spin. It's almost as if nobody ever releases a statement now. You can look at it in government and see that they've managed to uh, get it down to a T. Um, but as far as anything now that, you know, is controversial or there is a blame, there is always a counter spin mm. to say, oh, this is why it happened. Now, with all due respect, and I'm not for a minute suggesting that Scottish people in general, whether it's Rangers or whatever, um, you know, are they are desperately always hitting the bevy. But you <laughs> must be aware that when you've got Germans and Scottish people at a UEFA Cup final, you know they're going to drink a hell of a lot. Um, and you know they're going to be dehydrated in a very hot country. Yeah, listen, they knew how many fans were going to be there. And as you said, you know, Scottish and Germany like, like their beer. Um, you know, it's a warm night as well. So I, I just don't understand that. I just think, that, you know, they made a real mess of it. And they... Uh, I've come out, they should have just come out and apologised to both clubs. And, uh, you know, instead of saying, you know, as you said, making an excuse, they didn't realise there was going to be that many people or drink that much or eat that much. It's just nonsense. And as you said, it's just a sign of the times now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of your old teammates uh, is looking to, to, to play on, uh, Chris Burke. Yeah. 38 years of age, wants mm. to wants to play on. Um, the Blue Heaven days. He could have, uh -huh. he, he could have had a he could have had a coaching role there at Kelly, but he, he wants to keep kicking the ball, which I think is brilliant. Yeah, no, listen, it's one of them. You say he's a long time retired, and he's you know the opportunity for him to to maybe play on for another year. He's obviously got something lined up then to to go and play somewhere else, which which is good because at times he made a good impact for that Kamanic team um, during the season in the championship. So. No, I wish him all the best. I've known him a long, long time, and um, it's Good great. Player. To, oh, a brilliant player. Just injury, ankle injury over the injuries he had over his career at Rangers probably curtailed his Rangers career a little bit. You know, if he'd if he'd stayed fit and no had the problem with his ankle, you know, he'd have been playing there a lot longer. And um, wonderful player. You know, obviously come through the youth ranks with him as well. And 
and down to earth guy. So no, it's great to see him keep playing and hopefully he can get something sorted. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you one thing though, the, the Kilmarnock fans will be getting excited. Billy Gilmore's, um, I think his brother Harvey has signed for Kelly. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh. Um, so he's half as good as Billy. Half as good yeah. and they've got a good player in their hands. But no, it's good to see, let's say, the young lad get an opportunity to sign a professional contract and, and getting into the game and hopefully, you know, he can um, start uh, um, making a career for himself. Yeah. Um, elsewhere, some of the other news I want to get your thoughts on, lads, as well. Um, Hearts, there's reports, obviously, in Edinburgh that they're looking to make significant signings this season. I think Hearts will... I mean, you listen to the words of the manager, and he clearly feels as that five-year plan is to somehow close the gap between themselves and Rangers and Celtic and, and I think it's a I think it's a tall order I don't think it's a tall order if James Anderson starts to open the purse strings um, but certainly um, it's a big call from from uh, Robbie Nielsen and it's the words of the manager that we're listening to I think you've got to be ambitious I think you've got to you know you shoot for the scars, stars you know you've got to go, go and try and go for it I think the main thing for them is to try and establish themselves as the third force in Scottish football obviously this season they finished third they got to the Scottish Cup final but Hibs done that last season and look where they ended up, you know, so you've got to, you've got to maintain it, you've yeah. got to keep that hunger, you've got to keep your best players and, uh, you know, Hibs unfortunately lost their best player and I think Hearts are probably losing theirs, Suter, uh, they could lose Sims as well, so recruitment's everything, you know, if you're losing top players you've got to try and recruit and, and get equal quality in and if Hearts can do that, they're going to make a lot of money for them in European group stages, you know, they've got a chance to really go and kick on and, and, and pull away from Hearts, Ab Hibs, Aberdeen and establish himself as a third force, and then you can think about closing the gap in the top two, which is enormous at the minute. Yeah, um, one other little point on that, which I think is very interesting, and I think it would be a great move. I know Hearts train at the Orium at the moment, but they're talking about maybe spending 20 million on a training ground. Now, that would be uh, financed yeah. elsewhere, but if they do that, by the way, you're suddenly getting a situation where I think it's a huge attraction to say to somebody, come and play in Edinburgh, it's a brilliant city, it's a wonderful city to stay in, I loved it, um, and you know the surroundings, if they get, a, they get the right area. The Orium is good, um, it's served its purpose, but I think once you're a football club and you want to be have your own base, the privacy of you know your own training ground, I think this would be a great move for Hearts to, to actually go and get their own training ground. Um, you know, obviously the, the rugby use it and everything else that goes on. SFA use it so if Hearts can go and build their own cell training like you say that could be a game changer bringing players in as well so listen Hearts will want to be the third force in, in Scottish football and dump you know they, they were the best team last year in third place um, I think they'd need a lot of money to, to spend if they want to get anywhere close to the offer them yeah absolutely but this money that they're going to get in European football is certainly going to help them yeah it is and as I said they've got the opportunity now to really go and pull away you know Hibs have been disappointing this season at Aberdeen you know, that's the teams that you would associate, you know, been going for third place. So there's a real opportunity for Hearts to go and, as I said, cement themselves. Because if you can finish third every year, you're going to be guaranteed uh, the conference at least. Yeah, well, you know, Chief Executive Andrew McKinley is saying, Tom, if we're going to sign players, they're not going to be shirt fillers. Yeah, and that, that's what Hearts have got to do. You know, you can't go and sign squad players. You've got to try and get, sign guys that are going to come in and go into the start in the oven or at least compete for a place, you know. And if you can do that, then you drive the standards up all over the, all over the club. Yeah, what about uh, Dundee United? I mean, they'll obviously look to try and, uh, you know, in that top six, maybe try and push and, and push Hibs and Aberdeen for the battle for fourth and third with Hearts too. Uh, Tony Askar and the, the, the boardroom team are, are looking again at better quality signings for United. They've got their own ambitions. Yeah, listen, it's it's, all, it's easily saying that, it's being able to go and do that and bring the right players in. Um, Dundee United have a wage structure that, you know they won't be able to compete with Hearts, um, so they, they've got to try and pick the right players to bring in. But they'll, you'll, you, everybody's always looking to bring in better players, um, and if they can do that this season, you know to get fourth place. I think for Tam, for the first season back in the Premier League was well for Tam to get fourth was an incredible achievement for them, um, and you know they need to like I say build on that next season. Um, so if they can do that, then it'll be another good season for them. But it's going to be very very difficult for them to go forward with that. Yeah, um, it's going to be really interesting. And of course, um, there's one thing that I think a lot of people were uh, want cleared up. Is it Thomas Courts? Is it Tom Courts? Is it Tam Courts? And Tam has actually come out and, and made a statement just to kind of, a, a, you know, put it all to bed, to be honest with you. I kid you not. What, today? Um, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, folk don't actually realise, but my middle names are actually Garrity and Judge. 
<clears throat> now that's not bad. Um, he says, I'm from a mining town in Fife in Loch Ely, and the only people who have ever got to know my middle names are when I get pulled over by the police. <laughs> and he says, my name is Thomas Garrity Judge Courts. And, you know, he just this, said... This is actually real. This is real. And his name's, and he just said, it's Tam Courts. That's... Yeah. Right, okay. Right. So, so I don't want you to call me Tam anymore. No. I want you to call me Thomas so, Kelly. So what does he want? What does Is he want? your middle name? Thomas Kelly McManus. Thomas Kelly McManus, wow. So what does he want to be called, Tam or Tom? Tam. Thomas. Tam. Tam. Yeah. So don't call me to, uh, Tam now, please, yeah. on the show. Yeah, that's fine, Thomas. Just disputing cons. That's uh, absolutely, it's <laughs> mental, isn't it? What's your middle name, Charlie? Graham. Charles Graham. After Sunnis. Is, Is that, that right? Yes. Is it after Graham Sunnis? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. You learned something new on this yeah. one. Um, I think Ruffy's is... I going to set that internet oh. comment on it. <laughs> You'll never get Ruffy's middle name. Roderick. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Roderick Ruff. Yeah, that's, that's good, shocking. That's oh, fantastic. Um, Celtic are playing Glasgow City in the Scottish Women's Cup final at Tynecastle. Um, and, I, and I think this is the last chance, I think, for City... I don't think they've ever gone through a season in the last 14 without winning a trophy. Mm -hmm. If they don't win it this time, that's the first... I think it's the changing of the guard, Tom. Yeah, it is. I think the power shift is, you know, in women's football in Scotland. I think the, the fact that Celtic Rangers are investing heavily in the, you know, and even Hibs, Hibs were up there for a, a long time, you know, but the, if, the power of Celtic Rangers, if they're going full-time and they're bringing in big sponsorship and they're bringing in international players, then it's going to be difficult to see Amy Gallagher left the uh, Hibs to go to Celtic, so... They're starting to cherry pick the better players from the from the other clubs as well. So, I think Glasgow City, if the period of dominance is definitely over in Scotland. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good luck to both teams in that final. Um, there's a final on Saturday night. Uh, our reporter Kerry Pollock looks ahead to the Champions League final in Paris. It's Liverpool against Real Madrid. Liverpool are going for their seventh European crown, whilst Real Madrid will be chasing down their 14th Champions League title in 67 years, but only one can reign supreme. And it all takes place in Paris. Liverpool and Real Madrid will go head to head in the Champions League final for the third time, both having experienced success in their previous meetings. The Liverpool boss says the whole world will be watching. I really think the world will be red or white on this match day, um, and that's exactly how it should be. It's, it's real. Um, Historically, two teams were always um, um, strong in this competition and now in the presence as well, which is a good sign, competing with this kind of calibers is um, the best thing you can do. Liverpool were victorious in 1980. A late winner from Alan Kennedy secured the Reds their third European Cup. The champions of Spain had to wait until June 2018 to get their revenge. Gareth Bale's overhead kick was the highlight of Real Madrid's 3-1 victory in Kiev. One man who remains confident is Sadio Mane. The Senegal international says to win, they will have to defeat one of the best teams in the world. Even though we know it won't be an uh, easy game, but we expect, uh, especially if we play one of the best teams in the world. After the disappointment of losing the league on Sunday, the Reds captain Jordan Henderson says winning the Champions League is what dreams are made of. For me, um, you don't need any more motivation than the Champions League final. That's all uh, the focus is on, is, is going and performing. Um, that's all we dreamt of as kids to play in big games and it doesn't get much bigger than the Champions League final against Madrid. But standing in their way once again, the champions of Spain. Carlo Ancelotti and his men will be ready and waiting for Jurgen Klopp's side to arrive in Paris. Real Madrid's biggest threat, Karim Benzema, is currently the competition's top goal scorer. The Frenchman, who has 15 goals under his belt, could overtake Ronaldo's record of 16 goals scored in the tournament in one season. So which team will have their hands on the fabulous trophy on Saturday evening? Will the ribbons be red or white? Mo Salah says everyone on his side is motivated to win the Champions League. Everybody is motivated to, to win the Champions League because this is like unbelievable trophy for us. And I think every season will fight for it since I came here. Um, and I think everybody is excited for it. Yeah, there you have it. Um, Mo Salah maybe staying for another year. The, the lure of Liverpool and the Champions League, they're always there or thereabouts nowadays. Um, so, um, Charlie, Tam's ready for He's bursting for the toilet. So let's talk extensively about this Liverpool-Real Madrid game. <laughs> I've never had that on the oh, The first I mean, time the last show I'm absolutely oh, busting. Honestly, that is outrageous, eh? Uh, listen, did we all want Man City Liverpool? Yes, we did. But Real Madrid to come back from where they were with Benzema, incredible. And I think it's hopefully it's going to be a brilliant final. 
And Liverpool can just edge it. Yeah, I think Liverpool are going to edge it as well, Tam. Yeah, I fancy Liverpool strongly. I think that Real Madrid will come and attack. You know, Real Madrid have never in their history sat back and parked the bus, so I think it's going to be an open game. But I just think Liverpool got too much in the forward areas. I think Madrid are very reliant on ben- Benzema. I think that he still has to hurry up. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say. Well, I was going to say. I to think Van Dijk will snuff him. Yeah, the last point I was going to make was if it was me personally, just as an absolute throwaway wild card, I'd throw Bale in. It would absolutely derail Liverpool. It's, listen, it's not a bad idea, is it, Peter? It's yeah. um, listen. There's plenty of footage on Bale. He's done what he's done before, but. To throw him into a European Cup final, you just never know what he can bring. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I want to say thanks to everyone uh, for following us all through the season. It's been absolutely fantastic. We've thoroughly enjoyed your support. Uh, Stay with us on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel because we've got some one-to-ones that I think you'll enjoy. Steve Clark is up there now. Uh, There's Gordon Strachan, Pat Nevin, Jamie Murphy, James McPake there. Charlie Adam one-to-one is coming out next week and there's a lot more very special players uh, that I've been uh, talking to uh, and you'll be able to enjoy them all over the summer so there's lots more content there's Dream Team up there too uh, and there's lots of bigger and better plans on the way for the new season so tell your friends hit the subscribe button hit the bell and you'll get all the notifications of when our new content is up there we really hope you'll download the app because Thousands of you have downloaded the uh, PLZ Soccer app. You get all the breaking football stories. And over and above that, the podcasts. Thank you to thousands upon thousands of you that have been meeting us out on the circuit and saying uh, that they enjoy the podcast when they're out walking the dog or just uh, having a relaxing moment listening to the chat and the banter of the guys. To all of you who've contributed uh, with um, lots of comments, lots of very decent comments, because the one thing about Scottish football and the football fans is we love our football. We love our football clubs. Sometimes we disagree, but on this programme, I think, Tam, we've tried to give as honest an opinion as possible. Some you like it, some you don't. Yeah, you've got to give your honest opinion, you know, and uh, a lot of people will agree, a lot of people won't agree, but that's what football's all about, it's all about opinions, and as long as you've got a strong opinion, you're no roughy, and you sit in the fence every, every week, then uh, you know, you're going to get some stick. Yeah, absolutely, and like every other club in Scotland, uh, as one man or two men depart, we have to make big signings, so uh, keep it locked, there'll be new faces on the way, but from everyone in PLZ Soccer, uh, Charlie, we've thoroughly enjoyed having you on, I'm sure you're going to flit in every now and then when you're up in the country, but it's been an absolute joy having you. No, it's been a pleasure, Peter, um, really enjoyed it through the pandemic and and being on uh, on the show live, It's uh, it's been good, so hopefully I can come in and out um, every now and then, but... I'm going to miss everybody. It's been a good team here and hopefully, you know, bigger and better things next season. Get my ugly mug off the telly and get somebody else better looking. Well, um, well, the, good thing, difficult. the good <laughs> the good thing about it is we'll leave, well, we are here we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave you we'll leave you with a battering. Um, <laughs> apart from anything else, thank you to so many people who said, why Charlie Adam? Well, you never forget your mates and that's what football is all about. It's been a joy in the studio with Charlie. Uh, of course, Richard, Alison, Hugh, Tam Cowan, Tam McManus. Ruffy as well. Have I missed anybody? I think I've got them all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone's contributed. I hope you've enjoyed our team. Hit the subscribe button. Stay with us. Hit the bell and you'll get all the notifications on YouTube. And of course, all our social media will continue on TikTok, Twitter and of course on Instagram as well. So we'll keep you informed of what's happening, the ins and outs at the clubs. From Tammy Manis, from myself, Peter Martin, and we wish Charlie all the very best in the future. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be a great coach and manager. Thank you to you for watching.